Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. And truly, 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 we are grateful. Thank you so very much for your patience. We are having technical difficulties. That is obvious. Thank you for letting me know that there was no sound. I was having a good time back here, enjoying Jesus and enjoying the music. And I didn't know that you guys didn't have sound because, you know, I'm working it all by myself. And um, somehow, some way, I got kicked off the live. And um, but nevertheless, we want to welcome you to I Want to See You Wins Women's Conference Bounce Back. I am so delighted and excited. A night. Um, I, I'm just in anticipation and excitement for all that God is getting ready to do, people of God. Last night. We learned on how to guard our heart, my God. And I'm telling you, the woman of God ministered to us so profoundly on last night. And I have just been feasting since last night regarding the word of God about safeguarding your heart. Amen. And I'm telling you, every round goes higher and higher. Amen. And so we are delighted and excited on tonight for night two. Amen. And I, I don't know about you, but I have been in anticipation all day long waiting for this hour, this time for us to come together. Amen. Once again. Amen. I want to welcome you. Amen. To our woman's conference. I'm telling you, this is the best thing ever because right where you are in your living room, on your job, in your car, wherever you are, God can meet you at your point of need. My God, he can visit you. And you know, the good thing about this platform on tonight is that when God touch you, surely you would have been touched because no one's going to lay their hands on you through the computer, but God, because he's omniscient, because he's omnipresent, glory to God. He knows exactly what we need. Amen. And so tonight I'm saying to each and every one of you under the sound of my voice, and even those of you that will see this rebroadcast, open up your heart. Open up your heart tonight to receive of God. Open up your heart, glory to God, in anticipation and excitement for what God's going to do. Hallelujah. My God, get excited about what God is going to do. Because I'm telling you, if you get excited, I believe that God is going to meet the need. I believe that God is going to do something supernatural in your life like never before. Glory to God. And so because of that, I'm telling you, this has been an exciting time. On well, last night, we gave away a gift card to our, our, our great um, uh, attendee, amen. And tonight could be your night. There is a prize with your name on it, amen. And I just want to um, get you all stirred up so that you can participate in this giveaway, okay? So in order to participate in the giveaway, um, as corny as it may sound, uh, we're getting ready to take up an expense offering, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. If you um, are able to sow on tonight, whatever it is, your name goes into the giveaway. And then somebody's name is going to be called. I don't know when. It could be at the end like I did last night, but or it could be in the middle. I will see what happens. But the good news is you got to be in it 
to get your name drawn out, okay? So in order to do that, and I'm going to give you the information, and then we're going to pray, and then we're going to release this woman of God. I'm excited because the first time I got the privilege and the honor to hear Prophetess Sherry Shepherd, she was teaching on a Sunday morning. And uh, I was just scrolling down Facebook and I happened to see her teaching and her teaching piqued my interest. I said, my God, this woman of God can help a whole lot of women. I started seeing women's faces that I knew personally. I said, this woman has a word of deliverance in her mouth. She can help somebody. And I'm telling you, I delighted and excited to have met her and to tell her and i'm listening to what she was teaching about people of god and i told her, i said listen they're gonna get ready to contact you because i need you to come on my woman's uh i need you to speak for our woman's conference because you can help some women because i'm telling you it's time out for bringing in preachers that all they want is money it's time out for bringing in preachers that ain't gonna help nobody it's time for when you bring somebody to your ministry that they got to help the people. It's about helping God's people. It's about bringing forth deliverance. You see, last night, I'm so grateful for what happened on last night, but I'm excited even on what's going to happen tonight because your life will never be the same because what this conference is, is intentional. It's intentional. What that means is that God's going to meet your need intentionally. God's going to build you up intentionally. What God has for you is intentional. It's all with your name on it. It's a blessing with your name on it. Tonight, it's intentional. This day has been carved out, purely designed just for you. So that's why I'm excited because there's some women on this line today that God's going to heal your heart. God's going to bless you like never before. He's going to give you clarity. He's going to give you direction. He's going to heal your mind. He's going to heal your soul. He's going to heal your spirit right where you are. My God, I love it. Right where you are. You didn't have to go to a building. Glory to God for God to meet your need because that's the kind of God we serve. God will meet you in Walmart if the need requires it. God will meet you on your job if the need requires it. God will meet you wherever you are. And I'm telling you, people of God, God wants to meet some people right where they are. So that's why I'm excited because I love to see people delivered. I love to see people set free because I love to see people win. My God. Yes, I do. That's who I am. I love it. I love it. Because when God, when I see God uh, move for you, then I know my blessing is on the way. Glory to God. So because of that, I'm excited about what's getting ready to go down here tonight. Amen. Right where you are. So I want you to be able to be in this giveaway. I want to bless somebody. I want to bless somebody before the night is over. That's what else gives me great joy. So if you want to participate in this giveaway that you may have a chance, you may have an opportunity. This is what I want you to do. I want you to cash app, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, whatever offering or ever seed that you would like to support this ministry. But we want to bless somebody on tonight. Amen. So you can give the cash app information is dollar sign Apostle Angela Daniels. And I want you to use um, cash app because I can see your name. I want you to use cash app because I have your name or whatever name you have attached to your cash app. And then I will be able to call your name out because I'm writing the name of the cash app name. And I'm putting it in the drawing and somebody's getting ready to get blessed. They're going to be blessed tonight. Amen. So at this time, you can start uh, sewing so that we can uh, pray. And then we're going to release this powerhouse of an anointed woman of God so that she can take her time and minister and help some folks. And I'm telling you, people of God, I admonish you. I encourage you to stay on this live for the whole time, because I'm telling you, there's a word from the Lord. There is a word that's going to catapult you, heal you and set you free. And I don't know about you, but I came ready to receive tonight. 
Glory to God. Those of you that will participate, you can do it now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every seed sower. We thank you for every offering given. We thank you, God, for what you're getting ready to do. God is better than what's been. Father, we thank you, oh God, for those that are hearing the word of the Lord on tonight. Amen. And they are sowing their seed on tonight. Amen. They're sowing their seed. Then the seeds are coming in and I see who you are. Amen. And I'm putting your name in the drawing. Glory to God. Lord, we thank you, God. Please, that you that the place on tonight, God. We thank you that it's being used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We thank you that you shall get the glory in every seed offered, every giver, and even those that have a desire to give, God, and they're not able to tonight. God, I want you to bless them. Bless them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, that they will be able to give next time. Because God, you know we're about the blessing business. We want to bless the people of God. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, do it for your people tonight, God. Do it for them, God. Let them be open and willing, oh God, to receive of this anointing in the name of Jesus. And Father, while we're yet praying tonight, God, look on the woman of God. We bind up every spirit of backlash and retaliation in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, oh God, against any distraction in the name of Jesus. And we pray now, God, that you would move in her life even now, that as she gives the word, God, that we will not see her, we will not hear her, God, but we will hear you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this ministry gift. Thank you for the anointing on our life. Thank you, oh God, for what you're getting ready to do. And those, oh God, in anticipation, for those that's excited about the what's going on tonight, God, meet the needs of your people tonight. Oh God, meet them, oh God. Meet the needs, God. Meet the needs, God, meet the needs. Even those that will sacrifice tonight, God. Even those that are, oh God, in need of something, God. God bless them, God. Oh God, meet the needs, God. Oh God, there's some that even got to give their way out of what they're in. In the name of Jesus, bless, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we decree it to be so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Oh my, 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 my. Oh my, oh my, oh my. God is good. And all the time he's good. And I'm so excited and delighted in what God finna do in the life of his people. Amen. Now it gives me great pleasure. And I'm going to tell you something. This is the greatest thing ever on this platform because I don't believe in tarrying too long. Amen. We try to move in the floor of God or whatever he tells us to do. But uh, what the Lord did share with me on tonight is that he um, said to give space and time to the prophetess because she's going to really teach this as well and break it down. And if I were you, I would grab some pen and paper because there may be some stuff, some nuggets that you have to grab like we grabbed last night. My God, so many nuggets were released on last night. Amen. And you all need to get your pen and paper so that you can be prepared for the nuggets that's going to come forth tonight. And don't forget tomorrow, not, tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. We will be here together, myself, Prophetess uh, Sherry Shepard, uh, Prophetess Sharonda Mims, and we've added one more powerhouse to the mix, and that is Evangelist Jacqueline Brown. And I'm telling you, we're getting ready to have a, a real girl talk panel discussion, and y'all don't want to miss it. Bring your coffee, bring your, 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 your tea cakes or whatever you want to eat while we sit back and have some girl talk on tomorrow. And I'm telling you, it's going to be explosive. It's going to be blessed. And y'all get ready. Amen. So we thank God again for this great woman of God. I want to present to you uh, none other than uh, Prophet Sherry Shepherd um, of North Carolina, of uh, Prophet Sherry Shepherd Ministries. Um, I didn't get a chance to pull the bio and see all the accolades and all of the things that she's got her credentials and it wasn't any of that. I didn't even know until recently that we knew some of the same people and it didn't even matter about that. Yeah, I knew her by the spirit. I knew her by the spirit of God. And let me tell you something. That's how I like to meet people by the spirit of God. Before the Bible lets us know, no, no man after the flesh. Oh, but when you learn people's spirit, then you will know the truth from faith. And so I thank God that when I met her, 
I knew her and got connected to her by the spirit of God. And I consider her a covenant sister. I consider her a, a friend. I, I consider her by the spirit of God that we are in covenant together. That's what true covenant is. When you don't know people by their flesh, you know them by the spirit of God. That, that is powerful. And I thank God for this woman of God. As we present to you, prophetess Sherry Shepherd. I'm going to bring her forth. Y'all pray for me because you know me and these technical things. They are kind of funny, but we believe God is going to be all right. Y'all help me out a little bit. Okay, here we go. Let me just give it some time here. Let me see if I can bring this up first. Really? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. He is good. He is good. He is good all of the time. Hallelujah. Yes. I just want somebody just send up a few hearts, if you will, as a symbol that we are putting our hands together and giving God praise tonight. Can we just bless him? Can we just bless him for a few? Come on, everybody. Come on. Come on right where you are. Just bless him. I know we're, I know we're on the computer. Amen. But we are going to bless him. Hallelujah. As if we are congregating in person. Amen. Cause the Bible says where two or three are gathered it, it, as touching, as touching. It doesn't say you have to be touching. Come on here. But it says as touching. If we are in agreement together. Amen. Hallelujah. God can move tonight. Amen. So I am excited. I'm excited. I am excited. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on. Let's just bless him. Let's just bless him. I thank God. I thank God for being here tonight. Amen. Thank God. I thank God for let's let's take time and let's honor hallelujah the woman of God of the hour let's let's honor the angel of this house of I want to see you win ministries amen we bless the Lord for Apostle Angela Daniels this evening amen like she said my covenant sister God bless you amen everyone who is on the line I give honor to my Apostle um, this evening, Apostle Wanda Cisco. This evening, and I also thank and praise God for my spiritual father, always Apostle Joseph Prue. Without him, there is no me. Amen. And I also honor, take the time, and I also honor my uh, my mentor, my my marketplace mentor. Amen, Apostle Ron Tolliver. Amen. And I give God praise for each and every one of you. Amen. I see my sisters on the line and my friends on the line. Amen. I see Apostle Angela Thomas on the line. I see my Apostle in here. Amen. God bless you, Apostle Cisco. I see... I see um Elder Nadine in here and 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 um Pastor Alexis in here. So I thank God and and Prophetess Latasha Wallace and 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 my other sister, Amen, teacher who walks in the office of the teacher, um Tamika Gilbert, Amen. And if I missed anyone, please charge it to my head and not my heart, Amen. I was trying to watch everyone as they came in, and I give honor to each and every one of you who are connected to this awesome ministry. I want to see you win ministries. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Um, awesome, awesome women of God tonight. I am excited. I've been excited all day long um, about this message. Amen. So listen, as Apostle said, um, we met su one Sunday morning online. It was so funny. I was I was laying in the bed and the Lord told me to get up and to teach against this thing I call the strong delusion um, of God said he's my husband. Amen. And I began, you know, because I have a score to settle <laughs> with that spirit because that spirit has not only deceived me, but I have seen it deceive apostolic and prophetic women um, all around the country. Amen. So we're you know, so we are here tonight um, to combat some things. We're here tonight, amen, to snatch some women out of, of, of dark places and out of the places where the enemy would have us and wants us to be distracted and caught up in the wrong thing, amen, instead of being focused on our kingdom assignment, amen. God wants us to be focused on our kingdom assignments, but sometimes we have these holes in our soul called loneliness, amen, that, and they, and that, that, 
that hole in your soul will sometimes continue to call counterfeits into your life. Amen. So I, I just I just thank God for each and every one of you being here with us this evening. Amen. I'm I'm excited about the word of God. You know, if I were, you know, I, I just first I want to pray also, Father, I just thank you tonight for everything that you're going to do on this line. Well, Lord, I thank you, God. The woman of God has already prayed and I just want to just put a seal on it this evening. I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you. Move by your spirit. Move by your spirit. God, speak to the women of God. God, I thank you that chains are going to fall off. I thank you that yokes are going to be destroyed by the anointing. And I thank you now, God, that minds will be shifted in the name of Jesus. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise in advance. Speak to your women. Speak prophetically. I thank God. Amen. For each and every one who is on the line. I believe I also saw Pastor George, um, Pastor George on the line as well. Amen. So listen, y'all, listen, we're going to, we're going to dig right into the word. Have your way, God. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, if I were to take a text this evening, it would be um, Hebrews 4 and 12 tonight. Hebrews 4 and 12. Amen. And it and it reads as follows. It's for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I really want to, I want to really focus on the part where it talks about, where it says the word will divide asunder soul and spirit. Amen. Because a lot of times it's our soulish man, the seed of our emotions that gets us in trouble. It's the seed of our emotions that will mislead us and, and guide us into things and, 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 and cause distractions to come into our lives. Amen. So listen, um, I'm going to, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit on some of the points that I hit on when we talked about the, um, the strong delusion of God said, he's my husband. This spirit had, it, it haunted me because of my rejection issues. I might start off slow, but I promise you, I'm going to, I'm going to pick up in gears. Amen. <laughs> so listen, just to tell you a little bit about me, I, was the one who came up in the holiness church. I got saved when I was about 22 or 23 years old. I believe I was about 23 years old and I came in the holiness church and the holiness church, they made you feel as if, listen, if you're not married by the time you're 30, basically you're an old maid or that something is wrong with you. So <clears throat> I came to the church. I had abandonment issues. Like I didn't understand. I didn't know I had ban abandonment issues. I'm just going about life. You know, Know, and newly saved. So now I got all this pressure on me, the, you know, all this false teaching on me, think, making me think like I had to get married by the time I was 30 years old or something was wrong with me. I am the same girl. One thing about me, I am going to, I'm going to tell my story. I ain't no shame in my game. I was that messy baby. I like to say I was the kid. I was the young, the young, um, the young girl in church who would always fall into sin. I was the one who would fornicate because I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Listen, I was the one that the church players could always target because my self-esteem was so low. Listen, I'm the one who was the magnet for every counterfeit there was to come through the church. I was the one who, who, who developed a thing in my head that I had to be married to a preacher. Listen, come on somebody, because somebody, because one of my, the first prophecy I ever received was that your husband was a pastor. Come on here. The enemy knew right then and there that I was open for the, for, for the spirit to come and distract me. I never knew. I had no idea about my destiny. I had no idea that I was prophetic. I had no idea because I came up in the church where women weren't even at that time allowed to preach. So here I am. All I knew that I was supposed to be because of some of the teaching was I was supposed to be holy. Listen, not wear any pants, not wear any makeup. Come on here. And I had to get married and had some babies, but nobody noticed that I had low self-esteem. Nobody take, took the time to find out what was going on on the inside of me. They were more concerned with dressing up my outside than 
dealing with what was going on on the inside of me. Nobody, nobody seemed to notice that I had abandonment issues and daddy issues. Nobody seemed to notice, come on, that my self-esteem was already low. Nobody took the time, listen, to see in the spirit realm what was really going on with me. And listen, so then when they found out that I fell. Of course, now I had to deal with the stigma of having a lust spirit. Not once again, nobody took the time to see what was going on deep down on the inside of me. They were slapping oil on me. They were trying to cast out an imaginary devil. They were trying everything. You know, they were talking about me behind my back. Come on here. And you can feel when people are talking about you. You can feel when you walk into church and you have us and, you are, and you're practically wearing a scarlet letter on your dress. You can feel, come on here, when people are looking down on you because of your faults. Mind you, this is the church. This is the place where I was coming to get help. Now, don't get me wrong. I have no anger in my heart. They're wonderful people. And to tell you the truth, that holiness church gave me a great foundation because I needed some structure in my life. So yes, so yes, yes, yes. So, so please don't think that I'm throwing everyone under the bus, but listen to me. This right here, this, this is the kind of stuff that went on in the church back then. I gave my life to the Lord in 1991 got filled with the Holy Ghost, yet with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And yet and still, I could not seem, watch this, to keep my legs closed. But it wasn't until I got tired, I said, God, what is wrong with me? I want to please you. I want to be the one. Come on. I want to be, I don't want to fornicate because I'm reading this Bible and it's telling me, and it's telling me um, that it's a sin and I don't want to displease you. What is wrong with me? Do I have a lust devil? Come on here. I'm at home trying to cast the devil out of myself. And the Lord began to speak to me and said, no, look, he said, look at your relationship and the lack of your relationship with your father. Oh my God, my God, my God. And I began to put the pieces and he helped me to begin to put the pieces together in my life. I said, <clears throat> So basically, God, what you're saying is I don't really want the men, but I'm really chasing after my father's approval. Is that what you're saying to me? And God began to break down why I did the things that I did. I began to look in the mirror and I began to have to tell myself that and, and pull out every scripture that would build my self-esteem. So I just want to give you, I'm setting a foundation um, by giving you my testimony. So I would sit there and I would have to tell my Myself in the mirror every day. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I had to tell myself that you're beautiful. I had to tell myself the same things that my father should have been there to tell me. Yes, my grandfather raised me, but listen, listen, he was a loving man, and I know my granddaddy loves me, but I never heard the words, the, the affirmation words that I needed to hear from a man. So then I began to chase it in other men, and because I was so thirsty, Good God Almighty, because my self-esteem was so low, I was a magnet, watch this, for the counterfeits. I was a magnet, come on here, for every player that came through the church. You know how it is. You got the ones that come, that come through and do revivals. Listen, and there, oh, and there are some men out there who are looking for silly women. The Bible talks about it. I was the silly woman, come on here, that they could pinpoint, come on. Hi, oh, my God, my God. That was the silly woman that they could pinpoint and say, well, maybe I got a shot with her. Now, listen, I don't want to make it seem like I was a hoe. The Come on, y'all. Now, but but I did enough. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That I did enough to, to, to displease God. And I did enough to say, okay, God, what is going on in my life? Why is it so easy? As soon as a man gives me some attention and makes me laugh a little bit and key, 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 and ha ha ha, and they seem to be spiritual. Why is it that I almost lose my mind? Come on here. Why is it that I fall so deep in love with something, with a man who is showing me that he does not want to marry me? Mind you, I still got in the back of my mind. Listen, I got a goal to reach before I'm 30. Oh, my God. <laughs> because this is what had been programmed into me. Listen, you got to get married for your 30. I need some, listen, I'm, I'm, my, my, I feel like my biological clock is ticking. I got all this stuff going on. And this is why 
I ended up falling into so much mess. But one thing I love about God is the more that I stood in that mirror and I began to tell myself that you got purpose. I began to tell myself you're beautiful. I began to tell myself you're fearfully and wonderfully made. I began to tell myself God has better for you. Listen, and I had to keep telling myself, sometimes ladies, you got to keep talking to yourself. You got to speak some things by faith until they manifest in your mind. You got to speak some things by faith before they can manifest in your spirit. You've got to say it till you believe it. And baby, I said, one day I'm going to believe it. But here's the kicker. As soon as I started getting my self-esteem together, God began to speak to me and he said, Sherry, you're moving to Ohio. I am in Washington, D.C. I really don't know nobody in Ohio at the time, but I knew I heard the Lord. I was a baby in Christ, so he had to speak to me in a place. It was almost an audible voice. I will never forget it. I was working at Special Olympics as an executive assistant and I was sitting in the office by myself. My God, and the and I heard it literally almost most audibly because God did not want me to make a mistake and think, oh God, that I missed him. Oh my God, my God. We're still talking about Hebrews 4 and 12. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So what happened is this. <laughs> I began, I said, Ohio, Ohio, what in the world is in Ohio? And lo and behold, if our next church convention convention wasn't in Ohio, oh my God, I began to make friends in Cleveland, Ohio. So God started to lay out everything and began to lay out my path. But here's what happened at that convention. At the convention, my God, I saw a young man and he could dance up a storm. I saw this young preacher, my God, God and we became friends. And after that, here comes the delusion. Watch this. God said, now the next thing I know, I'm thinking that I'm hearing that that is my husband. See, now check it out. I still got this thing in my head. I'm still with the same organization. So now I'm thinking that God is going to answer my prayer because I'm going to be married before I'm 30 years old. Oh my God, my God, my God. So now I got it in my head. Listen, this is it. This is him. We and he, he and I could sit on the phone and talk all night and laugh and giggle and have a great time. Listen, we could, we became close friends. And to this day, if I call him right now, we'd probably bust out laughing. But see, I was young and I took things somewhere that it wasn't supposed to be. So now I've got, I'm walking in this delusion now that that this, that the reason God is sending me to Ohio was because he, because God was hooking me up to be married. Now, mind you, he's a pastor. Come on, he's a pastor of a small church. I didn't care. Listen, I began to walk and manifest myself, 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 like I was the first lady. Listen, I got out my baddest suits. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I began to walk, come on here, and begin to walk in a false anointing of a first lady. I began, come on here, to do everything that I thought that a first lady should do. Listen, I, in a sense, I was auditioning. This is why I tell the women of God, listen, whatever God has for you, you don't have to audition for it. You don't have to walk in a false anointing. You don't have to leave your place of ministry. If God said, if God speaks to a man about you, that man is going to come and get you. But listen, but my soul and my spirit, come on here, were mixed up and tied up. And my soul at the time was winning. Y'all ain't here. This the voice of my soul and my desires and my, what I felt like when my knees were speaking loud. I was allowing them to speak louder to me than the voice of the Lord. Listen to me. My leaders told me, listen, don't go up there running after no man. But I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I decided that I was like Abraham. Listen, let me tell you about this thing we call the strong delusion of God said he's my husband. If I'm, I'm sorry, if I were to take a title tonight, it's called dominion over the dysfunction and deception so you can walk in destiny. Dominion, dominion over dysfunction and deception so you can walk into destiny. Listen, I had, a, had it in my mind that now because 
the people are telling me, watch this, they're telling me now not to go up there for that reason. And I said, I said in my mind, oh, they just don't want me to be happy. Listen, this is the kind of stuff that happens when you have your mind made up that something belongs to you that God did not say. So I said to myself, I said, no, God told, he told Abraham to go into a land. Come on here. He, I, I had all my scriptures together. I had all of my story together. I said, they said, God is not going to speak to a woman first, you know, but I'm still in a place. Watch this. I'm in a place now where, where, where women couldn't even preach. So I sure had to brush that under the rug. Listen, I had a counteracting scripture to, to counteract everything that they were telling me because I was under this delusion. Oh my God, my God, my God, because I felt like, and I wanted that thing so bad. Listen, listen, not understanding. Maybe perhaps if I kept my little self home in DC, I might have married the man. I don't know. Like I said, come on here. We were good friends. We was on the phone all the time, laughing and joking and all this other stuff. You never know what God could have done. But at this, but me, I had to take myself out of place. Come on here. Because I said, God, because God said I was going to Ohio. I didn't know then about flushing out a prophetic word. I didn't know anything about praying a word out and fasting and praying on it to get further strategy. I just heard what I wanted to hear. I put the clues together in my own mind and then off I went running to Ohio. Now what God was really sending me up there for was to meet my spiritual father. Now that, that came out in the wash later on, but it, had, but it happened after I made enough dumb mistakes. Now listen, I'm grateful grateful because God was good and he's merciful and he worked everything out for my good. I still have my good girlfriends that I made in Ohio. I still to this day, we've been friends now for over 20 something years. I thank God for each and every one of them. But the main reason that God was sending me there was to birth me into destiny. Listen to me, ladies. Don't you allow a counterfeit, come on here, man, a counterfeit word or, or a, a word that you have not processed and flushed out through prayer and fasting to get you off course. Listen, listen to your leader. When you have a good leader, stop telling yourself that they're trying to control you. Stop telling yourself that they just don't want me to be happy. Stop telling yourself the lies that go along with this delusion because this delusion is bigger than what you think. See, we think we're just trying to get married, but what the enemy is trying to do is keep you from what God has called you in to. Listen, if I did not meet my spiritual father, there would be no prophet as Sherry Shepherd. You see, the re the God was bringing me up there for one reason, but the enemy wanted me caught up in this delusion. Watch this. He wanted me wrapped up and tied up and tangled up so that I would never meet him, so that I would never be prophetess. I would never have sung a prophetic song. Do you hear? I would have never been preaching because I would still would have been in an organization where I wasn't allowed to preach. Listen to me. The enemy, the reason he comes and floods you with delusions and distractions is because he's trying to keep you from something. Listen, when women call me and they call me on the line and they start talking about God said somebody is my husband. I right now I shut them down because I say the enemy's trying to keep you from something. Listen to me. There is a level of maturity that you have to be at in order to receive a word like that. There is a level level of maturity that has to take place in order for you to hold and birth and grow a word like that within the womb of your promise. Listen, you cannot, you have to allow the word of God to, uh, to divide asunder between your soul and your spirit. N listen, listen, listen. I want to, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I want to talk briefly about what goes along with that delusion. Look, if you can find yourself in any of these points. I think you need to get back at the altar. You need Kadabo Shaya. You need to get back on the altar, get back on the potter's wheel because there's something that the enemy is trying to keep you from. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. 
Listen, I put these 10 points together and it's and I posted it on Facebook. But listen, the, the, there's a mimicking voice that comes that tells you that somebody is your husband. Listen to me, single ladies in the house. It says that the mimicking voice call, tells you or causes you, number one, to leave your church and plant yourself in that man's ministry thinking that God told you to do it. Listen, you, I told you already, when God really says a thing, you don't have to put your yourself in place. You don't have to position yourself. Listen, and it will also have you trying to position yourself in leadership to try to become his right hand person. Listen, it will also turn you away, cause you to turn away from the people who really love you because in your mind, they are against you or praying against you. And you begin to treat the very people that love you like they're your enemies. Good God Almighty. And they're the ones who are seeing straight. Listen, I told you this spirit comes to, de to, to delude your thought process. Listen, it will have you acting all kinds of crazy. I have seen it so many times before and it puts you in a cocoon and now it has you thinking you don't know who to trust when the whole time your leaders and the people who have been there for you are the ones come on here who are trying to snatch you out. But listen, that demon will have you thinking that the very people that are there to lead and guide you, mm, my God, are the ones that are against you. Oh, they're just jealous. They don't want to lose me. They don't want to lose control over me. Listen, listen, and nothing can be further from the truth. This is a piece of what I was teaching when Apostle Angela and I met. Listen to me, that thing or have you acting a plum fool out here over a man who has never, ever even indicated, watch this, that he's interested in you in that way. And stop while I'm here, ladies. Stop reading into stuff. Come on here. If you don't hear a man say a thing, listen, don't you get your emotions caught up into nothing. I have men inboxing me all the time and they, they, you know, they swim around stuff. Come on here. They may be interested, but watch this. If they don't say they're interested, I'm not moving. Listen to me. Come on here because what happens, listen, I don't have time to be distracted. I've got women to snatch out. Out. I've got women to bring up and build up. Come on here. This is this, this this thing has been on my life for a long time. Don't you sit there and get caught up in crushes. Come on here. And, and people, and don't be calling every prophet in the country trying to get somebody. Come on here to certify your delusion. The devil is a liar. Yeah, you can find somebody. You can find an inexperienced prophet. You can find a low-level prophet. Come on here. That'll feed your flesh because the enemy will make sure that you hear what you want to hear and speaking of hearing what you want to hear when you are under the influence of a delusion watch this every prof every preached word sounds like confirmation oh god not just in the area of singlehood, but watch this, watch this. And it, we have all thought we heard God say something and every and then a preacher comes from out of town and says in 21 days and not many days hence, and we off and we shouting and we running around the church and God's not even talking about that. Well, ladies, we're not careful because of our soulish man, because of our rejection issues, because of our abandonment issues, because of our daddy issues. Listen, we will take that thing and we'll run around and we'll be like God confirmed it through the preacher and God was talking about something else. He might have been talking about giving you a promotion on your job but all you got on your mind is that man. The devil is a liar. Somebody lied to you and it was the devil. I'm telling you, I got I got a score to settle with the enemy and I'm snatching women out. Come on, oh, say, listen, Another thing that it does, watch this, this is where it really gets crazy, is it'll have you praying against other women and your sisters in Christ because you feel like you have to fight for your destiny together. My God today. Day. You will look at other women, the women that he really likes as an obstacle and a distraction to him when you're the one distracted. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Listen, that thing will have you sitting there looking, being a witch right in the church because now you're praying and trying to bind up your sister. Come on here. Y'all on the same team. You in the same battlefield. We in the same army. But because this man might be looking at her instead of you, you want to 
accuse her of being a distraction. You want to say she got a lust spirit on her. You want to say she got a seducing spirit on her. She ain't got no seducing spirit. He's attracted to her and you're jealous. Call it what it is. Good God Almighty, call it what it is. Listen, sometimes you need to just get on the altar and say, I'm jealous. You want to, you need to get on the altar and say, God, I'm insecure. Fix it, Jesus. Fix me, Jesus, because I don't need to be in this. We got you said this is a work of the flesh. Come on here. And you're sitting there and you praying, talking about I bind her and you going home. I bind her in Jesus' name. The devil is a liar. Now listen. See, this is what I'm saying. When you are a prophetic woman, see, the enemy wants to come and twist up your gift. He wants you to have you. He wants you to misuse what God has given you. And because when your emotions get tied up and tangled up into something, come on here, it will confuse you and have you preaching and have you praying something that you have no business praying. This is why you need the word of God, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword that will pierce even the dividing asunder of your soul, good God Almighty, and your spirit. Good God, because it is your speak, your soul, it needs to, that speaks right here. It tells you it needs to be to stay divided. Ah, God, da, 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 ba, shake you got to keep it divided, ladies. Listen, just because you, you can even see that that man, that's not hers, his wife, or, or your only job, your only job, prophetic women, your only job, apostolic women, is to say, God, show him, show him, show him, and make sure you ain't in your flesh when you do it. But all of that binding her up and, and that the devil is a liar. You ain't, we don't have, we're not operating in witchcraft over here. We're not operating, come on here, we're operating in holiness over here over here because listen you better learn to come on here to keep your emotions in check because your emotions is what will sometimes cause you to blow it come on Moses ah, all of that stuff Moses went through all of that walking and dealing with attitudes and isms and schism and all kinds of stuff and he still didn't get to see the promised land because of his emotions and that's a man so we really gotta watch it ladies ah, Okay. The enemy has always come for women in their emotions. He's done it since day one. He did it in the garden. He came. He didn't go to Adam. He went to Eve. He went to Eve because Eve was an emotional being. My God, he went to Eve to say, listen, listen, don't worry about what God said. Huh? Come on here. Deception has always been the enemy's key for women. Listen, he said, don't worry about it. Listen, if you eat of that tree, listen, you're going to be like God. You better listen to me. The enemy has always come for us in our emotions. This is why we got to stay planted in the word of God. This is why we got to use the word of God to keep ourselves in check listen the next time uh, ta shake it you better listen you better listen you better listen to the word you gotta memorize your word you gotta study your word it's your word that's gonna keep you grounded it's your word that'll keep you out of trouble it's this word my god that'll keep you out of trouble come on with me with the with the lord Hallelujah. This spirit also causes you to lose ground in your life and in your ministry. When I went to Ohio, I left DC making all kinds of money for my age. Watch this. And I went to Ohio, took myself out of the will of God. I put myself somewhere where I did not have to be, where I wasn't necessarily supposed to be. Because, listen, I could have made the same friends, listen, at the conventions in Cleveland. I didn't have to sit up there and be in Youngstown. I could never get my own apartment. I lost my car. I lost stuff. Come on here. Because I was out of the will of God. Oh, my God. And listen, listen, and sometimes you know what we want to do. We want to spiritualize it. We want to tell ourselves what we're going through for righteousness sake. Now, now, baby, now sometimes we have taken ourselves out of the will of God and sometimes we're somewhere where we have no business being. My God, we have no business. Come on, planting ourselves in a man's face. Good God Almighty. Listen, I told
told you already you hear every message as a confirmation and listen then you become a victim every time correction comes and you're not being you're not being attacked you just don't want truth and everything everything let me tell you something about that delusion it will consume you you can't stop thinking about when you're gonna marry this man you can't stop thinking about him everywhere you go come on you're walking in preparation for something that god never said was gonna happen i'm telling you gone down to david's bridal watch this uh, and you've already picked out the wedding dress uh, you are ready to marry the man in your mind and he ain't even taking you out on a date come on here the devil is a liar we've got to do better women of god we've got to do better come on listen to me we come on here we should be the most powerful intercessors on the face of the earth you come on here women of god the god almighty we've got to be the wailing women come on where are the wailing women listen we're too busy pursuing things that god did not say we're too busy pursuing stuff come on to fill our emotions and our soul we're too busy good god almighty if we will pursue the presence of god we would pursue the presence of the Lord like we pursue our desires. My God, imagine we will be a force to be reckoned with. I came tonight to realign some women just like God had to realign me. I came tonight, come on, to snatch you out of dysfunction and snatch you into purpose tonight. I came tonight, God Almighty, with a sword in my hand because I'm tired of seeing the women of God being dysfunctional we can't get along in church come on here because there's jealousy going on we come on here we got isms and schisms come on here everybody's trying to be the chief and can't nobody be the Indian my God I'm tired of seeing women walk around in dysfunction my God God, we can't be unified because somebody got an attitude. We can't be unified because there's somebody, come on here, who's got low self-esteem that wants to try to usurp authority where they have none. My God, we can't walk in unity because we're walking in rebellion at the same time. The devil is a liar. My God. God tonight, Yakobo shot out of us, but I'm taking authority tonight over every foul spirit. And I call you into realignment now in the name of Jesus. My God, we're gonna stop operating, stop operating in dysfunction, stop acting like being married is the end all be all. Good God Almighty. Listen, baby, if you get in purpose, he'll find you anyway. Seek ye first, ah, katata, the kingdom of God. Oh my God, seek ye first his kingdom. The Bible lets us know that the kingdom of God, oh my God, is what is it? Righteousness, peace, good God Almighty, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You ain't got peace when you're tormented about being, being depressed, about not having a man. You ain't in the kingdom, come on here, because you don't have peace, my God. Huh? You ain't got joy, you're walking around with your head down, come on here, because Things aren't going your way on your timeline. My God, but I dare you to get in his glory. I dare you to get in his presence. I dare you to let God break you. I dare you to submit your will to God. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus, I dare you to realign yourself. Get back to your first love, ladies. Get back, come on here, in the presence of God. Seek his face up while it may be found. Listen, we are in the last days. We do not have time, my God, to be sitting around here depressed because we ain't got nobody. Listen to me. Sometimes the reason you don't have anybody is because you're not doing what God said to. Ruth was found gleaning in her field. Ruth was minding her business, doing what she was supposed to be doing. Oh my God. God, Ruth was all about doing, providing for her household. The Bible says she happened upon the field of, of Boaz. Listen to me. Sometimes, listen, you go when you do what you're supposed to do, when you're preaching like you're supposed to preach, my God, when you're praying like you're supposed to pray, when you're in God's face like you're supposed to be, when you're, when you're going where he sends you to go, destiny will collide with you. My God. God, sometimes that man can't even see who you are because you haven't even broken out of your shell yet. My God, get told about Shande. Listen, you got to be in the place where you can be found. You can't be found. Listen, some of you are called to preach, but you want to usher. 
Good God Almighty, you want to hide. Come on here on the usher board when you got a word in your mouth. My God, you want to hide. Good God on the choir when you got a word in your belly. I told somebody, listen, sometimes you might have met your husband at your book signing, but you didn't write the book. Y'all see what I'm saying? Get in the will of God. Get in your purpose and watch what God does in your life. But there's not the time, but in between time, it's not the time to be downtrodden. It is not the time to hold your head, to hang your head low. The Bible says that the unmarried woman careth, good God Almighty, for the things of the Lord. We come up, we caring about everything but the things of the Lord. The devil is a liar. Get in your purpose, ladies. Get in your purpose. Listen, no more of this fighting. And, and listen, I just came through an attack, good God Almighty, where people were praying against me over a man. This is the kind of foolishness that has to stop in the in the church. This is the kind of stuff that has to stop in the body of Christ. Listen, you also, well, another thing that comes along with that delusion is that you are, you'll be manipulative and you'll float between Delilah and Jezebel. Listen, you don't know one day, one day you batting your lashes and twisting your hips, come on here and trying to make the man feel guilty, listening to Jezebel, and now you out of your, you feel like stuff is out of control, so then you become manipulative and try to control stuff. The devil is a liar. Listen, when God says a thing, you don't have to manipulate. You don't have to put on a guilt trip. You ain't got to seduce. You don't have to do anything ungodly. My God. And listen, and this is the biggest one. This is why I saved it for last. It says you will put your life and your ministry on hold even if you're at his church. My God. God today, you will put your life and your ministry on hold. You can be moving forward in the things of God. Watch this. You can be moving forward. My God, and I've seen this too. And as soon as God begins to use you in certain areas, then here comes a counterfeit. And now you're thinking this man is your husband and you're sitting at his church. And now you don't see your face on that one flyer no more because God done shut up the heavens over you. My God, a Katoshaya. I know what I'm talking about. And God done shut that thing up. Listen, I can't find you on Facebook no more. I can't find you, good God Almighty, on any flyers. I don't see you preaching any more revivals because now you've taken yourself right smack out of the will of God because you're pursuing, because you're still pursuing daddy. Oh, God. I tell women all the time. Listen, <laughs> you are, you can tell where you are with God by the things that you tolerate. Hey, by the things that you put up with, by what you will do for love. I just taught yesterday morning on looking for love in all the wrong places. Listen, you've got to get to the place where you can allow the word of God to work in your heart, to work in your soul and divide that thing, divide between spirit and soul and your emotions my God because it's our emotions my God that get us hung up and stuck and distracted every single time I know that the Bible says if we delight ourselves in him he will give us the desires of our heart but listen you need to look up the original Hebrew meaning of that scripture. The word there, give, means a sign. It does not mean that everything that you want, God's going to give it to you. No, what it means is he's going to assign you what his heart's de his desires are for you. So listen, he's going to give you. He's going to take his desires for you, and he's going to give them, good God Almighty, and he's going to give them to you. My God. God, this is why we're sitting around believing God for stuff and then we get depressed when it doesn't happen. Was it God's will for you? My God, my God, my God. Was it something that God said you should have or was it something that you said you wanted? My God, listen, I told you I came to realign tonight. We've got all of this crazy stuff going on. We've got Rachel and Leah right up in the church being jealous of each other. Listen, 
Leah was another woman who had never allowed herself to be healed. Listen, Leah had to grow up with the stigma of whatever was going on with her eye. Listen, some people say she was cockeyed. Some people say she was lazy eyed. But she, but you gotta understand, Leah had to hear this thing all of her life. Listen, so now she finally gets married and she keeps having baby after baby after baby. The Bible, the Bible says that God saw that Leah was hated and she and he opened up her womb, so he had to give her something. So listen, Leah was able to produce children, so she finally had something over on her sister who was always considered to be the beautiful one. But at the same time, Jacob never really loved her the same way, oh my God, the same way he loved Rachel. Listen to me, her daddy felt sorry for her. I guess her daddy figured she can't get no man no other way. So listen, can you imagine having to live like that? Thinking your father, your father's trying to hook you up because maybe if I don't do this, my tender eyed daughter might not get married. Can you? So she's, she's, she's dealing with all of that and she still wants this man, Jacob, to love her. Now my husband will love me, she said. Oh my God, listen to me. Listen, so now you've got, rejection issues coming from her father watch watch because now she's because she doesn't feel as beautiful as her sister so now she's looking for and she transfers that on to Jacob oh my god my god so now maybe if i if i do this and i have all these kids he'll love me listen to me you oh god oh god oh god and this is the kind of stuff we have going on in the church you don't have to audition i'm gonna say it again listen you can have all the babies in the world but that man listen i'm hoping somebody is gonna be with who he want to be with ladies he's gonna be with who he wants to be with oh my god my god my god my god <laughs> yes and god is so so good he's always able huh he's always able to be touched with the feeling feelings of our infirmities I don't want to I don't want anybody to leave here tonight thinking oh God well maybe I'm never gonna get a man I don't want the enemy to come in with that deception and have you going home thinking and feeling like all oh, hope is lost I just want you to realign and focus on the things of God I just want you to get in your field Ruth I just want you come on here to be everything that God called you to be that's it that's all because when you do that when you seek first the kingdom all of these things good god almighty are automatically going to be added unto you he already knows what you have need of ah because sometimes we think we need something at the time that we don't need it god always knows best listen if i got married when i wanted to get married oh god almighty Ha, huh? my God, I, if I got married a few years ago, come on to who I thought I wanted to get married to, my God, today, listen to me, I probably, I wouldn't, I, 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 I might not be sitting here talking to you right now. Come on here, because God always knows best. Stop taking God's rejection and his no. stop taking his nose as rejection. Understand that he's protecting you from something. I don't care how good that man is. Y'all better talk back, because not all counterfeits are bad. Oh, God. Listen, when you get to a certain place in God, listen, the devil ain't going to send somebody that crawled up from under a rock no more. Listen, he can't send the thug no more. Listen, he's got to send somebody that looks like, that looks the part and talks the part. Good God Almighty. But you might find out if you dig a little deeper that he got some insecurities, good God Almighty, that you would have to submit to if you married him. Ah, God Almighty, I don't care how good they can preach. I don't care what kind of collars they got on. I don't care what kind of vest they wear. Listen to me. You better trust God to give you what he has for you because the man that God has for you, the man that God has for me has to be able to handle all of this. He's come on here. Listen, you're not going to put your oil within the hands of just anybody. Listen, you've got to care about what God has put in your hand. You've got to trust God. You've got to care more about what he's put in your belly. You've got to care about your assignment. You've got to care about that thing more than anything good god almighty we sing the song lord i love you more than anything come on listen but sometimes it's time to meet it 
Come, it's time to meet it. I love you more than anything. I love you more than my personal desires. I love you, God, more, 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 more than my desire to even be married, more than my desire, good God Almighty, to be successful in the business world, more than anything, more than anything, good God Almighty. Listen, we are realigning tonight, ladies, because we are we're taking dominion, good God, over dysfunction and deception so that you can walk in destiny. You've got to be able to sew up those holes in your soul. You've got to deal with the issues that you had when you were a child. You've got to deal with daddy issues. You've got to deal with mama issues. I call it mama trauma and daddy trauma. You've got to deal with it. You've got to deal, come on here, with the fact that sometimes you were touched inappropriately as a child. Some of us were, come on here, mishandled as children, not just physically, but you might have been handled in, mishandled emotionally. You might have, you might have been mishandled physically, emotionally. Come on here, verbally. My God, but God, you've got to move past that place. I know they told you that you weren't going to be nothing. I know they told you, good God Almighty, that you were never going to amount to anything. But I came tonight to tell you that the devil lied to you. He used somebody to lie to you. He used somebody to try to speak a word curse over you. But we cancel it now in the name of Jesus. My God, I'm prophesying tonight that after tonight you will never be the same again. I'm speaking to your mind and I'm commanding it to shift. Oh my God, my God, I'm thanking you. I'm thanking God for you tonight and your shift and your paradigm shift. I'm thanking God tonight. Oh my God, that you will never be the same, that you'll never compete with another woman, that you'll never be jealous of another woman, that you'll never be intimidated by another woman, that you understand God. And what God has for you is for you. And there's not a devil in hell who can take it away. I'll prophesy to you now that your insecurities are no more. Insecurities come from past disappointments. So we uproot your past disappointments now in the name of Jesus. And we lose peace over you. We lose peace in your spirit. We lose peace in your soul. My God. God tonight, listen to me. God is healing you from your past disappointments. Yes, you made mistakes. Yes, we all made mistakes. Yes, we fell. Good God Almighty. But all have sinned and come short of, of the glory of God. Listen to me. It's of the glory of God. Listen, it's this when we fall that we miss the glory. Good God Almighty. God wants us to operate in his glory. He cut my but you can't do it the distracted woman of God. You can't do it. Come on with your mind all over the place. You can't do it chasing prophecies about a man. Oh my God. You can't do it. Oh my God. Worrying about what this one is doing and worrying about where he is now. Listen to me. You got to check his phone. You can't trust him. My God is either you or him and that, that and right either way it means you're not ready to be in a mature relationship listen you got to move past all of that ah the woman of God preached it last night listen sometimes your deliverance is in walking away my God tonight we're walking away from trauma come on here and foolishness and stuff come on here that God did not ordain for us to be in we come on come on we go come on Jada we canceling entanglements tonight in the name of Jesus, we're canceling entanglements, illegal relationships. And I hear the word illicit, illicit relationship, illicit situations. My God, tonight we are shifting and we're moving forward. We're being the baddest intercessors on the face of this earth. The, the enemy is running to and fro, seeking who me, me, who we may devour. And we're sitting on the phone worrying about a man. Now, listen, I'm not saying be a robot. I'm not saying, come on here, that you're not going to be attracted to anybody. I'm not saying you're going to be blind. Come on here. We are human, but we've got to readjust and realign ourselves when we catch ourselves going just a little bit too far. My 
God, come on here. When we catch ourselves being out there, good God Almighty, and distracted. You know when you distracted, you ain't reading your word like you used to. You ain't spending time with God like you used to. But you on the phone, come on here, chasing after marriage prophecies. The devil is a liar. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, my God, my God. You better shift tonight. You better shift tonight. We are truly living in the last days. You better shift to come on here. Don't you miss God. Don't you miss what God really has for you. Come on here chasing after a crush and a counterfeit. The devil is a liar. My God, my God, my God. Come on, it's time to shift tonight. We're moving into destiny. Listen, you want to be found? Get in your place in God. Get where he has for you to be, my God, and do what he called you to do. Listen, one thing about me. Listen, the man that God has for me, he going to see everything he getting. You better believe that. He going to see this fire. Come on here. He going to see me walking in miracles, signs, and wonders. Listen, my apostle, is she still on the line? One of, one, one of the favorite things she taught me. Listen, I said there was a young man and I liked him and he was going to come to church with me. And she said, she said, good, if you're going to scare him, you might as well scare him now. Good God Almighty, the man God's got for you can handle everything that's in you. And it turns out, lo and behold, he can handle everything but this preacher side. Y'all better talk back to me. Let God come on here. Bring your husband. Let him show you to that man and stop presenting yourself. Good God Almighty. You ain't got to present yourself. Just be cute. Be fabulous. Be, but be, but by all means, be anointed. Be oily. Come on here. Be powerful. Be everything that God called you to be so that God can do what he wants to do in your life. Keep, come on here. Keep the word of God before you because it's powerful and it's quick and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. My God, stop all of the madness and stop acting like your sisters are your competition. Stop acting like they're your enemy. Come on here. I know we got different personalities in the body of Christ. I get it. I understand that. Listen, we might not always get along. There might be some friction, but if we can pray for each other, my God, if you can see, if you can see in the spirit, you can see what's going on with your sister. She might seem like she's mean as a junkyard dog, but if you get an intercession, God might reveal that she was molested when she was young and she's got up walls. Come on here. You you got to learn how to see stuff in the spirit realm and stop just looking upon the flesh because what happens is the reason we don't pray is because we got our own issues going on. We defensive. Come on here because we've been hurt. Watch this. And now you've got this sister over here. She's been molested. So she's so she got walls up. Watch this. But your issues and her issues are colliding in the church. And this is how the enemy keeps friction and stuff and mess going on in the body of Christ. When we're one team. We're one army. Come on here, ladies. We're one army. Stop all this. Stop all of this being jealous and, and, and intimidated because somebody else does something differently than what you do. The devil is a liar. Come on. We are one. We're one. We're one. We are one. Hallelujah. And let go of all this delusional stuff. Oh, God Almighty, stop it. Just stop it. Listen, when you really know who you are in God, when you really understand who you are and what you possess, you understand that you are the one who carries the favor. Ah, oh, God Almighty. Good God, the Bible says he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. Listen, that man obtains favor when he marries you. Carry yourself like you got favor. Come on here. You, if you don't care. Listen, if you know a woman who is jealous and intimidated is not walking like a woman who carries favor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not queen like. That's not favor like. That's not virtuous woman like. Come on here. When you're a queen, watch this, and you know what you possess and you know what you bring to the table, baby. Listen, you can look at that man. Come on here. And he can say hi and you can go on across the room and you go hi and you can keep moving. Come on here. Let him pursue you. Come on here. Listen, I told, I said, my husband gonna have to find me in the daytime with a flashlight because I'm so locked and loaded on my purpose now. Listen, he got to find me. Come on. 
come on, we want to be found, but we steadily, we be steady in the man's face. God can't even, God can't even reveal nothing to him because you always up in his face. The devil is a liar, all up skinning and grinning and auditioning. He ain't got to find you. You right there. Come on, come on. You right here, all up in his mug, all up in his face all the time. Listen to me. <laughs> oh my God, my God, my God. You better listen, y'all. But yo, listen, listen. I'm gonna give you some big sister practical advice right now. Listen, I told you, be cute, be fabulous, be anointed, be oily. That's all you've got to do. That's it. You ain't got to be smiling and key, key, key and ha, ha, ha and all up in no man's face. The devil is a liar. I ain't got to do it. Listen. I'm in a place now in my life. Listen to me. Counterfeits <laughs> be gone. Do you hear? Counterfeits be gone. Listen, and I'm going to tell you one more thing. I'm going to tell you one more thing. When you get prophecies about husbands, ladies, ladies, put that thing on the shelf. Don't be sitting around analyzing it. Come on, because that can distract you too. <laughs> Look at this coffee shop here. <laughs> Y'all, I like I, I like to talk big sis talk. When you when God gives you an accurate word about a husband, because it's just us on the line. I can't. I have so many clues about what my husband is like, what he looked like, what he sounds like, what he prays like. Come on here, I've got them all together. But guess what? At the end of the day, even when even when I meet here, well, listen to me. I still ain't doing nothing. I'm not walking up to that man and talking about what well, the Lord told me this, that, and the other, blah, 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 blah. And you meet everything on the checklist. The devil is a liar. He still got to come get me. You understand? Because listen, let me tell you something about prophecy. Some prophecies are conditional. Oh, God. Somebody ain't going to want to hear this tonight. But some prophecies are conditional. That man still has to choose to answer what God has said. So it's best that you get locked and loaded in your purpose. Come on here. Stay at the feet of Jesus. Stay in your prayer closet. Stay in his presence. You don't have time to be pursuing anything. Mm -mm -mm. And when you know who you are, my God, when you know who you are, you're not going to chase anything anyway. Do you ever see, ever, have you ever seen Queen Elizabeth chasing or pursuing anything? No, because she knows who she is. Come on, him, and she knows what her what comes along with her crown. Do you know what comes along with your crown tonight? Huh? Come on here. Do you know what comes along with your crown? Listen, all of this crazy stuff we're doing, my God, it's got to stop all that. We are not thirsty. We are not pressed, ladies. Come on. We got to get out of that place where we're pressed and we're, we're, we're doing any and everything to try to get married. The devil is a liar. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord. Stop the madness. Stop the madness. Come on here. I'm from D.C. Stop the madness. Stop the madness now because it's not going to get you anywhere. Hallelujah. Because what happens, listen, God is still a jealous God. Y'all ain't talking. He's a jealous God, y'all. Hmm? You sitting there. You want that man more than you want God. That's a problem. Ah, that's a problem. Come on here. And when you start and see the, the tricky part is because you're still in church. <laughs> you're still clapping your hands and you're still dancing before the Lord. Uh-huh. But the whole time, listen, you're consumed with this, with this, with this, with this prophetic word about getting married. Sometimes your desire, your desire has to be to please God. That's got to be number one, not to get married. And God will sit there and be like, OK, until I have her undivided attention. Oh, God almighty. Until I have her undivided attention. Ain't no, listen, she ain't going to, listen, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. He's a jealous God. He's still jealous. He still wants to bless you, but he's still jealous. Listen, some of you have purpose. You, you call, you call to the nations, but you sitting here trying to be a first lady. The devil is a liar. Huh? Come on. You call to the nations. You called to evangelize. You called to travel, but you want to settle for being a first lady. That was me. Come on. I thought because I was taught that that was the end all be all and that women couldn't do nothing. Listen to me, man. Listen, you cannot. You cannot put your ministry, your life on hold. That is when you cross the line and God's got a problem. 
Hallelujah. And you sitting there convincing yourself that you going through for the gospel's sake. You ain't going through for the gospel's sake. You're being disobedient. You're splitting your time. Come on, let that word come. Ah, yeah, but I say, and divide between word, between soul and spirit. Stop allowing the enemy to tap into your emotions. Come on, and distracting you by what's there. The, I preach a word every Monday night, and it's called unhacked. Unhacked talks about your operating system. You know, think of yourself as a computer. L listen, listen, listen. Think of yourself as a computer, and your every computer has an operating system. Sometimes life happens to us, and our operating system is just a little bit off. It gets a little bit off, hallelujah. And this is why we do the things that we do and we pursue the things that we pursue. And this is why, you know, some of us are, some of us are, are just, we just thirsty, y'all. We thirsty because daddy wasn't there. Or we put up with a man coming in and out of our lives because our father was in and out of our lives. And he taught us that, that subconsciously, he taught us that that's what a man does. Hmm? Come on, I told you at the beginning, you are what you, you can tell where you really are by what you tolerate. Mm, by what you put up with. Listen to me. Your operating system has to line up. Your our operating system has to be kingdom. It has to be everything that this in this word. This word is our operating system. This word tells us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. This word tells us who we are, ladies. This is this word. Come on here. It's this word. Come on, that tells us that we can prophesy. It's this word. Come on, Deborah. Come on, Deborah. That tells us that we can be mighty women of God and judges in the land. Come on, and judges in the spirit. It's this word. Come on. So, ladies, I just want you to realign tonight. Listen, we've been going for about almost an hour. I could talk about this stuff all night, but I'm going to begin to back out of this thing. Hallelujah. But we're not going to be like, we're not going to be paninas. We're not going to be layers. Come on here, operating out low self-esteem and jealousy. Panida was always tormenting Hannah because it's that same spirit Leah had. Come on here, thinking she had a one-up on somebody. We got to stop one-upmanship also, ladies, in the body of Christ. Panina, come on here, was the one having all the babies, but, uh, but Elkanah loved Hannah. Come on, we, we want to be Hannah's and we want to be the Rachel's. Come on, we're not going to be Leah and Penina tonight. The devil is a liar. Okay, listen, y'all. I love y'all so much and I love what I do. I'm telling y'all, I could go on and on and on and on, as you can tell. But I'm going to back out of this thing. <clears throat> And we're going to allow um, Apostle Angela to come back. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. As we're getting out of this. But I just want to really encourage y'all tonight. I do. I do. We're not, we're not, we're not doing that anymore, law. Y'all, we're not doing that anymore. We are realigning and, and focusing on our purpose. If you don't know what your purpose is, listen, what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that bothers you the most? What is it that God puts on your heart that's a burden? You may, you might be a governmental prophet, but you sitting around trying to be a first lady and all you're worried about doing is getting married to some dude. Come on here that ain't even saved. The devil is a liar. A man won't work. Come on here, but he a good man. So and another thing, stop falling in love with potential. Stop falling in love with potential because you're going to marry that man's reality. Y'all hear? You're going to marry his reality. You're talking to a woman who is divorced now, okay? Because I married reality instead of potential. You see what I'm saying? I married reality looking at potential. <laughs> My God, stop looking at potential. And Mary, listen, that man that God has for you, if you are a go-getter and a hustler, why God going to send you somebody lazy hmm? to frustrate you? If you come on, you call to the marketplace and he's jealous about your business connections, God ain't sent him. He ain't sent her. I'm sorry. Come on here. That man is going to be able to celebrate and push you and love on you and, and, and be secure in who he is because he's got his own thing going on. He's he's able, come on here, to do what God has called him to do. He, he ain't got time to sit there and be jealous of you. <laughs> My God, that's the kind of stuff. I, I, I have a feeling we're going to talk about that kind of stuff on the panel tomorrow. Listen, y'all. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get in your purpose, get in your flow, and let God do what he wants to do in your life and stop all of this. And we got to stop all the delusional behavior and stop fighting each other in the spirit. The devil is a liar and the truth ain't in him. 
God bless you. I love you. I hope I've said something tonight to empower you. And I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen, 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 amen. Didn't I tell you God was going to do something for us? Didn't I tell you God was going to do something for us? Okay, he did it. I know without a shadow of a doubt that the woman of God has helped us on tonight. Amen. And I am excited and delighted of everything that I heard. She stated dominion over dysfunction and deception so you can walk in destiny. Do you hear what I said? Dominion over dysfunction and deception so you can walk in destiny. What a theme. What the word, I mean, the word of God was so plain and so awesome and so helpful. And I have a word for a prophetess, um, Shepherd, but I'm going to share it with her tomorrow. Because I'm telling you, you all better remember that name, Prophetess Sherry Shepherd. Hear me. Prophetess Sherry Shepherd, her name is floating in the in the airwaves, and God is going to open up some profound, profound doors for this woman of God. She helped some people tonight. I'm telling you, this was a national, universal word. Everybody in America could relate to what she was saying. Everybody could relate to what she was saying. And I'm telling you, if you all have opened up your heart tonight, there's no doubt in my mind that God did something for you tonight. And that's what it's all about. Time out for going to things and attending things and you're not getting nothing out of it. It's time out for that. Okay. It's time out. And I'm telling you tonight and last night, I know you all were blessed because I was. This has been a very awesome conference because it's impactful, it's effective, and it's helping women and people in general. And that, my brothers and sisters, that is what it's all about. We just thank God for the word of the Lord. I love what she said. She says, stop binding your sister because you are jealous. I'm going to talk about some scenarios on the panel discussion. You guys need to tune in at 10 o'clock. Uh, Central Standard Time, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, because I'm telling you, I'm going to share some scenarios with y'all that I'm telling you, if you're wearing a wig, it may stand up over your head when I get finished with you, because I know some real situations and circumstances. And I'm telling you, you think tonight was something tomorrow when all of us get together and share our stories, we're going <laughs> to we're going to blow up some computers and phones and everything else on tomorrow. But that was so powerful, binding your sister because you are jealous. And she talked a little bit about witchcraft. And we're going to touch on that tomorrow for sure. And then I love that she encouraged us to keep our emotions in check. And I love that her main assignment on tonight was to realign us. And I'm telling you, it, it blessed us. But this here, what blessed me, this is what I love. When she said, she calls it mama trauma and daddy drama. And, I, and this, this, this here is my ultimate takeaway. And I think everybody under the sound of my voice should repeat after me. After tonight, my mission is to be cute, fabulous, and to be oily. <laughs> you know, but I, I added a spin on it. To be cute, fabulous, focus, and be oily. Because if we could get those things down, we won't get caught up in nothing else. And then God can have his perfect will in our life. Oh, I'm so excited about tonight. This has been so awesome. And I thank God for the word of the Lord, confirming and blessing. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, it's been phenomenal. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal time on tonight. Amen. And I just want to say, I thank God for all of the leaders of I Want to See You Win Ministries. I especially thank God for our pastor, the pastor of I Want to See You Win Ministries, and that is of the person of my wonderful fiance, uh, none other than uh, Pastor Derek Miles. Amen. We thank God for his love and support and his blessings even upon this um 
conference and he's just as excited as I am <laughs> amen, about us having it. And the theme, he was very excited because he shares my views in regards to wanting to see people's life changed. And when I told him about who we were going to have to speak, and I was telling him about Prophetess Sherry Shepherd and how we connected and her story, I tell you, we, we have a whole lot of stuff that we're going to share tomorrow. I'm going to leave it like that. I don't want to give it away because I know people, everything that she said on tonight, I know so many people like this. And it's just don't make no kind of sense. <laughs> that spirit is strong. That delusional spirit is strong. But I thank God for the anointing that's on the woman of God's life, that she was able to come in and minister and break it. So those of you who suffering and those, those of you that may see this rebroadcast and you say, maybe this is this. She ain't talking about me. Open up your heart. Open up your heart to receive. And say, Lord, if it's me, take it out because I don't want to be hindered. I just want to walk in destiny. Amen. So we just bless God for each and every one of you on tonight. And just like last night, we're getting ready to pull a name. It's not too late if you want to be able to sow. You can. Um, and I'll put your name in a pile and shake it up with the rest and see who we um pick out. So you're welcome to do so at this time. If you desire to give, to put your name. Um, in the drawing, you're welcome to do so. You can cash app. Why do we do cash app? Because I can see your name and I'll put your name down and I can call your name out. If you want to give, you can do so at dollar sign Apostle Angela Daniels. And um, and we're going to pull a name in just a few moments. Now, the, the object is you got to be in it. When I call your name, you got to be present. If not, I'm going to pull somebody else's name. Simple as that. So if you want to give, you're welcome to do so. Okay, so um, I, I'm going to pray for those. There's some people that are still giving. Father, we thank you for every seed so We thank you for every offering given. We thank you for what the woman of God has given on tonight, Father. We pray, God, that you replenish her. We bind up the spirit of backlash and retaliation right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We cover her under the blood of Jesus, God. Cover her. Cover where she is, God. Cover her possession. Cover her family, God. In the name of Jesus, we bind up every principality, every spirit of retaliation and sabotage and, and backlash in the name of Jesus. We come against it in the name of Jesus and we decree it to be so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay. And we have some people's names and we are putting their names in here. Hold on for one second. Okay. We have some people that are still giving. Hold on for one second, guys. I'm got to add these other names here. Okay. We have a time stamped. All right. So we're getting ready to close the doors of giving so that we can. So we can pull a name. OK, we're getting ready to do it, to pull a name. All righty. All right. And Father, we thank you for all. All that has been given, Father, we thank you, God, that the seeds that they are sown is being used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and that every seed that is sown, it is fertile ground. And Father, we decree it to be so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Okay. All right. And if I had a drum roll, okay, let me put this thing here. Shake it up here. Pull, we just gonna pull a name here. Okay. And if the person is here, 
We're going to call your name out. Okay. So you want to add more people? Okay. Hold on for a second. We got to add some more names and sh shake it up again. Some people are still, we still got some people still sewing. Okay. Let me put your name in. Fair is fair. Okay. All right. Everyone's giving all minds a clear. Let's shake it up again. <laughs> okay, we're shaking it up again. Pull a name. Whatever name we pull, that's who it's going to be. Is that, uh, have we closed it? Okay, it's now closed. It's official. Okay, it's official. Okay, pull a name. Is this per I know this person better be here, but let me just see. Let me see. I'm getting ready to call the person's name. And again, if you're not present, then you don't get the prize. Okay. And the winner is well. They well, this is the thing. The person that Cash App information is their name. The winner is Jacqueline Brown, and I guess Dr. Brown as well, because she said it's for both of them when they gave the offering. So we pulled their name out. So, Jacqueline, are you here? I'm sure Jacqueline Brown got to be. On. Is she still on? Wait a minute, she ain't. Wait a minute, Jacqueline Brown, are, are you still with us? Are you still live? I need her to say, I'm here. I'm here. Wait a minute, Jacqueline. I... Really? I don't... Is she present? Really? Is Jacqueline Brown on the line? Okay, so Dr. Brown and uh, Jacqueline Brown is here. Okay. Dr. Brown, is your mother with you? Okay. <laughs> she said, we're here. Okay. Because I'm delayed to have won a $50 gift card. Yay. Let me put congratulations because uh, okay. Okay, there it is. Okay. Well, congratulations. We thank God for our winner. We'll get those cards out to you as well. And we thank God for all that God has done on tonight. Please join us for our panel discussion. It's going to be fiery. It's going to be hot. It's going to be awesome on tomorrow at 10 a.m., Central Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I look forward to us, excuse me, coming together and may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. 
on tonight, all that our eyes have seen and all that our ears have heard, Father, we ask God in the name of Jesus that you would bless these now your people and even those that will see the rebroadcast, Father, that you would move in a way that only you can, Father. We pray.